What's up Wolfpack, Cole Gregg here, and today we have the all new Pivot Trail 429. This is a 120 mil rear, 140 mil front in our enduro package trail bike that's ready to smash climbs and absolutely get your adrenaline pumping on the descents. All right, well, let's start out with the obvious. We have a vertically mounted Trunnion high volume shock in the back. This is an all new update from the last bike. Basically what this allowed Pivot to do is increase the progressivity across the entire stroke. As far as build kits go, there's 14 options. Our bike here is the XT XTR Enduro package. So basically what this means is Pivot spec two different models for this bike, one being the Enduro model and one being the trail model. Our Enduro model features 140 mil Fox factory float 36 up front, whereas the trail models come spec'd with 130 mil. So one of the cool new features with this Trail 429 is Pivot has introduced a high-low flip chip. Basically what this does for you, the rider, takes you from a 66.5 degree head tube angle in the low and a 66 degree head tube angle in the lower setting. That adjustable flip chip also affects the seat tube angle. In the low setting, you have a 77.5 degree angle and in the lower setting, it goes down to a 77 degree angle. The wheelbase on our size large is 1,229 millimeters. This keeps you in that range of planted on the downs, but also snappy enough to wiggle up some tight switchbacks. Our size large features a reach of 770 millimeters, while the medium comes in at 455 millimeters, the small at 425 millimeters, and then back up to the XL at 490 millimeters. The chain stays for all sizes are 433 millimeters. For those of you interested in the stack height on this bike, it is 613 millimeters. There's one last trick up this bike sleeve with that flip chip. What it allows you to do in the lower setting is run a 27.5 plus tire, or for those party animals out there, you can go ahead and mullet this bike right out of the box, which I am super happy about. Pivot has specced this bike with an air shock and does not advise putting a coil on. Yeah, we know it's not ideal, but I think for this type of bike, you're gonna have no need to have a coil shock. All right, well, let's dive into the frame details for this 2021 Trail 429. This bike features ISCG 05 mounts for a chain guide, a SRAM universal derailleur hanger, 157 millimeter Super Boost Plus, and the frame comes in at a mere 5.9 pounds with the XTR build weight coming in at 26.5. For this year, the hollow core carbon layout of this frame was able to drop 300 grams from the previous model. This is also Pivot's stiffest chassis to date, and that is across the board. They're downhill bikes, a cross country bike. This bike is an absolute beast. Paired with that 5.95 pound frame weight, there's also size specific tuning on each frame. So a small and a medium and a large are all gonna have different stiffnesses to fit each rider's weight and riding style. Usually a rider that's lighter weight doesn't need as stiff as a bike. So to give the same overall trail feel to each rider, Pivot has gone ahead and gone above and beyond and given you size specific frame stiffness. That is pretty sweet. Well done, Pivot. Also with this frame, you get full internal cable routing. No fishing lines through, no wondering when the line's gonna come out. You just put it in the front and it comes right out the back. It's a really, really cool feature. If you're like me and gotta have water on the trail, you'll be surprised this bike comes with two water bottle mounts as well as the Pivot Tool docking station. So before we get into how this bike rides, let's go over the build details on this Pro XT XTR model. In the US, this bike retails for $6,999. What you get with that up front is a Fox Factory 36 with the grip 2 damper. That's the one that features both high and low speed rebound and high and low speed compression adjustment. This is a really wicked fork for this style of bike. Handling the rear suspension is also a Fox Factory Float DPX2. This shock features a low speed compression adjustment, low speed rebound, and a three position high speed lever with lockout. Getting the power to the ground is a 12 speed XTR derailleur with an XT shifter. Shimano also covers the braking duties with the XT M8124 piston caliper paired with 180 millimeter rotors front and back. Both front and back, you're greeted with an XM1700 wheel set featuring a DT350 hub. Keeping the power on the ground is a Maxxis Dissector 2.4 inch wide TR3C XCO. Now with all that lingo, what I have to say is these tires are an absolute perfect match for this bike. Down here in Arizona, the rocks are loose, they're golf balls, they're marbles, they're as big as bowling balls, and I never really had an issue with traction on this bike. Now, when I did go above 30 PSI in that rear tire, there was some slippage, but for my style of riding, I was able to keep that rear at about 27 PSI with no issues. 
Getting the power onto those dissector tires is a race face effect R crank set with a 32 tooth chainring. Up top, this bike comes with Pivot's cockpit. They are the Phoenix Team low rise bars at 780 mils wide. For the stem, Pivot also went with their own in house brand, featuring the Phoenix Team Trail Enduro stem. One thing that really surprised me with this bike right when I got on it was the Phoenix factory lock-on grips. Now I'm a gloveless rider, so having good contact points makes a huge difference. And these new grips definitely keep the sweat at bay while also providing you plenty of comfort when the trail gets rough. So last but not least, let's talk about the dropper post. It is a Fox factory transfer 175 mil dropper with that sweet matching Kashima coat. For me, this dropper was a little short I always seem to have this problem. As you can see, I have it quite a ways out of the bike. It didn't really cause me any issues on the descents, but just something to be of note if you're a taller rider and likes to size down. All right, so finally, let's get into how this bike rides. Let's start off with climbing. So one of the things that I need a lot of help with in the range of mountain biking is the climbing. So this bike was super supportive while also giving me plenty of traction, both standing up and sitting down. Now with that dropper being that high, I did see at a little bit lower speeds that front wheel wanting to come up, but overall the, the front wheel stayed planted when I needed it to and I could easily lift it up and over rocks. The shock tune on this bike was plenty supportive, but also supple enough to keep my bum feeling nice and good on those long ascents. One thing I did notice with this bike at, was at slower speeds, it seemed to be a little bit twitchy and it really favored a high cadence when climbing. Uh, that could be to my climbing style and skills and also being new to the Arizona area and not really knowing how to navigate those loose rocks very well. But I found that if I kept my cadence up, it really rewarded me. And speaking of rewarding, when you stood up and started grinding up a climb on this, it felt like a rocket ship going up rock gardens. And for me, it gave me a ton of confidence. So throughout the entirety of the test riding, I never once used that three position climb switch on heavy ascents. I could see this maybe being useful when you're on a big road climb, but other than that, the amount of support this tune and this new layout of the suspension gave me was absolutely phenomenal. So being a novice climber, I tend to get a lot of crank strikes and on this bike, I really didn't have that issue. The bottom bracket didn't feel too high, but it definitely offered plenty of clearance over some of the bigger rock rolls we have here in the Phoenix area. Outback, the XTR derailleur paired with that XT shifter performed as it should with no hiccups, being able to smash through the gears on the climbs within moderation, of course. Uh, but the XTR derailleur is a really, really good fit for this bike. So for my style of riding, which is more focused on the enduro than the trail side of riding, this bike allowed me to really open my eyes to what can be possible on a short travel bike. Like I said, for me, it did favor that higher cadence um, and kind of that slower speed climbing up and over big rocks. I think a lot of it was just my skill set not being there, but I did perform very, very well as it should for a, a trail ripper like this. Okay, so now on to the descending aspect. How does this bike go down? It goes down really fast, like super fast. Uh, paired with that 26 and a half pound weight, it is very agile. Uh, you can really put the bike where you want it, but you're not held back by that 120 mil of travel. At least the trails here I've been riding. And I really would like to get it back up to Washington on some of my local trails there and see if I can hit some PRs because this thing is wicked quick. The rear tune on the shock is absolutely dialed. Uh, the fork is paired with that shock is a perfect combination. Like it is, you, there's nothing more you want out of that combination. Uh, the geometry, that si 66 and a half degree head tube angle on the low and 66 in the lower is a really good balance for, for making this a nimble trail bike. It's not an enduro bike, we all know that. But with that said, it does really well when it gets rough. That new vertical layout on that DW link eats up small bumps, like absolutely eats up small bumps. And there's a lot of them here out in Arizona. The 433 mil chain stays really reward you when the going gets tight, but they're not so short that the bike doesn't, it doesn't fishtail rather was what I'm trying to say. When I'm on a high speed straight section, it really feels like it tracks. But then when I come up to a tight switchback, I need to lean over and get the, the back end out. It snaps out and comes back to center really easily. The reach on this bike was super comfortable. I didn't get a chance to have this on some really steep sustained terrain, but on the, the flatter undulating terrain here we have in the valley, it was super comfortable both on the, the shorter descents and more the undulating kind of, you having to crank up, crank down, crank up, crank down. Uh, it, it was a good balance overall. 
The new vertical layout of this DW link really feels like it gives you speed. It doesn't hang up through those, those chunky sections. And I found on that mild gray when I'm standing up cranking into the next rock garden, it just felt like it wanted to go. It didn't hold me back at all. But with that said, it also just, it ramps up really well. It's a combination of the tune that Pivot worked with Fox on, as well as that new Trunnion vertically mounted shock. The, the overall package for this bike focused on descending really does feel like at the highest level of trail bike, trying to peek into that enduro category. While it is an enduro bike, you can't expect it to ride like one, but I do have to say there is not a lot of trails that I think would I would shy away from on this bike. Sure, you might be going a little bit slower, but if this is your one bike, you can really do a lot. I would say maybe not bike park stuff, but for your local rides uh, after work, long weekends, or even you know the occasional 10,000 foot climb day, this is a bike that you really want to spend some time on. All right, to sum things up, the 2021 Pivot Trail 429 is a bike that can be for a few different riders in my opinion. One being that XC rider looking to get into maybe a little bit more of the trail enduro category and that enduro rider looking to get into that XC trail category. This bike gives you confidence on the descents. It makes climbs much easier than they should be. Uh, that overall weight package at 26.5 pounds is absolutely undeniable. And with this fork and shock package, there's really not a lot of trails that you're gonna be scared of on this bike. Pair that with size specific frame tuning, uh, a full XTR derailleur and XT shifter, four pop brakes, 180 millimeter rotors. This bike is ready to party. And don't forget that you can mullet this bike too. So there's another bonus for those of you that wanna do that. Overall for me, this is a bike that I would absolutely love to have in my quiver. It's allowed me to spend more hours while being less fatigued, but also having plenty of fun on the downs. So for more information, go to thelonewolf.com, check out our full review. And if you have any questions about this bike, the build kit, uh, maybe some more specifics for your terrain and who this bike, or if this bike might fit you and what you want out of it, feel free to drop a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you out on the trails.